I don't usually film the stuffing around bit, but um, why I am is I'm not sure if I'm going to get black smoke. And I always feel like if I don't, f well, every time I've done it, I always feel regret that um, I didn't get that on film. I'm trying to phase shift. And I've got a, I've made a crude dual rail power supply for the op amp. So I just need to get the signal coming out. So the whole idea is I'm not going to use the um, power output. So I'm going to use a digitized output and then get that and then start shifting. Yeah, that looks gross, doesn't it? And it's at two different magnitudes. Yeah. Don't know. But that might be my crappy rail supply, most likely. If I shift this, potentiometer pot, what I'm hoping to see is the phase angle change. Well, it's inverted. It's 180 degrees, but I can do that myself. Oh, it's moving. I think it's moving, just slow. Is that in phase now? It's in phase now. It's working, John. Peter, you're doing it. You're doing it, Peter. You're doing it. Phase to phase voltage. So if this changes, I know the, sh the circuit's shifting. Is it going up? Yep, definitely going up. Now it's going down. Oh, now it's going back up again. Look at that. Keep going, keep going. You can do it, little trim pot. 410 seems to be the ceiling of my trim. So I've gone ahead and adjusted some resistor values in the circuit, and um, what I'll do is I'll put the circuit up on the screen somewhere, maybe down the bottom left or something, um, of the circuit that I'm using. So. I adjusted some resistance values and I've been able to get roughly close. So what I went and did was I calculated um, what the what the voltage would be with the two different voltage vectors between phases. So now I've got 622 millivolts between phases, which is roughly 120 degrees. Next step I've got is I'm going to get a better scope because this one is just too hard to use other than every time I put it on camera, I get my face in it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I'm going to order a better scope. And there's a few out there on eBay which will do the job better than this, because I'm only talking 50 hertz, so it doesn't have to be something super sick. We need, And we all need to fix this crappy sine wave. Like, so obviously this is the op-amp crapping out at near its peak. Um, but I don't have any voltage regulation on the um, op amp channels, the positive and negative voltage feeds for the op amp. So I reckon that's what's causing that. Uh, it could also be obviously the caps aren't big enough. So I've got what, 100 nanofarads, so maybe I can put a bigger one in. I'm oh, not 100 nanofarad. Yeah, I've got 100 nanofarad. I can put a bigger one in. Um, all right, so. Stick around, hopefully next week I'll have a different scope depending on how long the mail takes. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll build this circuit a bit better. Now that I've got something working, I'm going to uh, work on the voltage rag, work on the um, breadboard because it's pretty chaotic. Let me just pan over. So what I'm doing is if you look at the last video and I said I was going to have an expansion, what I'm going to do is send the signals out and then shift them. So I've got a signal getting pulled out the back of this um, to give me a 50 hertz sine wave and then I'm going to shift it, shift it again and I'm going to do the same thing with the current channel. So I don't have to worry about being in super one angle because it's all going to be shifted 120. All right, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to come back and have a look. Uh, this was just a quick video, a bit, uh, not, nothing special. Um, yeah, hopefully the next one's a bit more exciting.